I think uh, the development of the new technologies for uh, detailed um, analysis of the genetics and the gene expression and the organization and evolution of tissues is a very, very crucial change that has come up recently. And this, together with the artificial intelligence, have given us new ways of uh, studying the aging process and defining uh, the problems in the aging uh, process. Since the technologies have been developed so fantastically rapidly the last 10 years, I think we now have uh, really good methods to study the, the process uh, of aging. And this is important because most countries are struggling with the fact that um, the number of old people is getting bigger and bigger. And this is a burden with all the degenerative diseases, not only for the persons themselves, but also for society because it costs a lot of money to treat these chronic degenerative diseases and dysfunctions. So we have to help and uh, treat people in need with these chronic diseases because there is a variation and selection of cells in our body that is going on all the time. We realize that all cells do not age in the same way, so they are very heterogeneous and we can then define the old uh, bad cells and try to get rid of them and also define the good young cells and promote them. And I think this is a new paradigm in how to uh, handle such slowly developing problems that you can think of them in an evolutionary perspective and use artificial selection methods to promote uh, cells that you uh, want to have and function. I'm sure there are a lot of pharmaceutical companies also that are interested in, in developing anti-aging drugs and they will be more successful the more we know about the basic mechanisms of somatic cell evolution and aging. We still have the hope that it will become more efficient and perhaps also cheaper in the future when we understand more about the process and have developed better tools to prevent these degenerative processes.